<laughs> um, we're going to start the pre-recorded talk, which is entitled Cloud Native Application with Dapier and OpenShift by Yipsam. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to DEF CON 2020. We will talk about the cloud native application with uh, DAPR, DAPR. Uh, what exactly is DAPR? DAPR is the Microsoft latest open source project. It is an event-driven portable one-time for building distributed Microsoft, uh, microservices for stateless and stateful application on the cloud and also on the edge. It embraces the diversity of languages and development framework. It supports many programming languages and is a natural fit for Kubernetes and OpenShift. In the uh, DAPA uh, framework, we have the DAPA concept. DAPA concept contains two fundamental uh, concepts, building blocks. The building blocks implement distributed system capability. They include, for example, publication and subscription, day management, resource binding, and distributed tracing. Components encapsulate the implementation of a building block API. Um, so that would include you know, Steph, PostgreSQL, MySQL, Redis, MongoDB. Many of the components also is pluggable so that you, the implementation can be swapped out and swapped in. So inside a building block, you have a building block API, right? So it exposes a public API um, that you can call from your code using the component to implement the building block uh, capability. So each building block has multiple components, as you see from the architecture diagram here. So uh, DAPA have the following uh, building block components that were built in, right? For example, surface-to-surface -surface invocation, state management, uh, publish and subscribe, resource binding and trigger, actor, observability, and secret. Um, so these are uh, all built-in uh, uh, building blocks, and you could also do your own customization building blocks. Uh, depends on what you need. The data architecture you can see um, at the application code at the top, right? You could support any any type of framework. You could have a GoLang or Node.js, Python, Java, Ruby, C sharp. Right? Those those are all different type of application code that is supported. Then you talk to the middle tier data using some sort of HTTP API or gRPC API, um, and then and then you talk, talk interact with all these different components in data, and then data will talk to the uh, lower layer on the cloud services using AWS, Google Cloud, Microsoft, and so on. Um, the component. Um, Basically, it's a functionality uh, deliver as a component. Each component has an interface definition. Uh, all these different components are plug inable, so you can um, swap them in and swap them out easily. The component type, um, so we have seen earlier, we have service invocation, resource binding, state management, distributed tracing, which can subscribe and act. So data on OpenShift. So um, what you need to do is to set up um, the different um, pods using data, and each pod contain a, a data container, right? So for example, you have a data actor on one pod, and then you have a data data sidecar injector in one pod, data operator in one pod. All these different data pod interact with the uh, data Die card. So um, DAPA, DAPA also have an API that support HTTP or gRPC that talk to your application code, right? So all these got encapsulated in, in, in OpenShift on the left side. And, um, and that could interact with other components on the right-hand side, right? Using the uh, resource binding, the state or store, the publisher and subscribe, and the distributed tracing. 
So in order to use Stapler in OpenShift, first uh, we would install HAM, right? So download your latest HAM from GitHub.com uh, and unpack your HAM and and then uh, find the HAM binary and move it into the uh, user bin, user local bin HAM. And once you have installed HAM, you can go ahead and install Docker using the yum install Docker. Then you could use uh, the system control to start the, start the Docker service. Um, at this time, you are available to install DAPA. You can use the wget uh, dash q and get the DAPA, get the installation script from, uh, from GitHub. Um, so once you get the shell script, you, can, you need to log into your OpenShift cluster as an administrator. Make sure that you check in, check your login status with the OC who am I, and you should be an admin administrator for your cluster. So since we are using HAM repository to install DAPA, you need to add the DAPA URL into the HAM repository. Using the HAM repo add DAPA and pass in the URL, you could add the HAM repository. And then uh, next step, you need to do a HAM repo update, making sure that you get the latest code. So now you have uh, DAPA and HAM and Docker in store. You can go ahead and create a namespace in OpenShift. Um, so in this case, you can use an OC create namespace. I'm giving it a name called DAPA system. Uh, once you have uh, your namespace, you can start installing DAPA into the namespace using HAM install DAPA and then pass in your namespace name, DAPA system. Um, so that would install the, um, the, the namespace for you. So once the, name, the DAPA is installed, uh, double check and make sure that you have the uh, DAPA operator, DAPA sidecar injector, the DAPA placement, and the DAPA sentry. So these four objects should be uh, available as four different ports in your DAPA system namespace. So uh, the DAPA operator uh, manage the component and service, services endpoint for DAPA, right? So that's pretty clear. Uh, the DAPA in sidecar injector injects DAPA into the uh, into your ports. The DAPA placement used for for actor, right? It create a mapping table that map uh, actor instance to port. And then the DAPA sentry manage the transportation layer security, basically as a act as a certificate authority. Now you can check your port status and make sure that uh, they are in the running state. So when you call OC get port, pass in the namespace DAPA system, you should see the four different ports are running. So in the sample code, we're going to demo how to get the DAPA running in OpenShift um, and then deploy the Node.js app. Let's subscribe to the order message and persistent. So in this uh, diagram here, we have the DAPA one time that talk to the no code using the DAPA API. Um, we are using the uh, state management using uh, state store, including some databases such as Redis. So on the left side, we have the user that were interacting with this application using a get and post endpoint. So the get endpoint will get the, uh, a list of orders. The post endpoint will be creating a new order. So in this Python app, we generate uh, messages. So the no app consume and persist them. So this architecture diagram will show you the DAPA component. So the DAPA one time will talk to the Python code. And then, um, so you have one DAPA, and then uh, you have another DAPA one time that talk to the no code. So these two um, DAPA one time talk to each other. And then at the end, it, the table one time will talk to the state store with the Redis. 
So first, get the latest code from uh, DAPA. This is a Hello World project. If you go to github.com, DAPA, sample.git, um, then you cd into the sample Hello World folder, you should be able to see the project. The sample code has a dependency on Redis as a state store for data persistency. So therefore, you need to install Redis. Um, so the new order post endpoint. So when we need to create a new order, right? So we call app dot post and basically pass in new order as a as a as an endpoint API. Um, so you have the request and response object. So in this sample code here, right? It would create it would call where the stay store to persist the order information. And then the get endpoint is uh, similarly, you can call app.get and slash order, and then pass in the uh, request that contain the order ID. Um, so in this case, it will call the where the stay store and retrieve the latest order information. So now you know we need the dependency on Redis. To install Redis, um, you can call ham repo egg um, and using uh, chart dot uh, uh, you can install that. Uh, you can add that repository, and then after that, you can call ham install Redis and install Redis into your namespace. Uh, Redis also uh, have a dependency on the secret, so extract the secret from the default namespace for Redis. So you Use the OC get secret, specify the namespace, uh, specify the JSON path using data.redis password. Once you get the password, you can update the Redis YAML file in the deploy directory and update the Redis host to use the Redis master 6379 and then the password from the last step. Um, now you have the Redis YAML file updated. You can call OC apply f on the YAML file and make sure that the component get created. Now you can create the uh, Node and Python application using OCRPy-F. You can create a Node YAML and then OCRPy-F create a Python YAML. So at this time you can do a OC get port on the DAPA system. You can see that the DAPA operator, DAPA placement, the Sentry, the Dapper sidecard, no app, Python app, Redis, were all set up and running. So observe that the message, uh, you can look at the message and by looking at the logs and coming out from the port. So all you need you to do is to do an OC log and port with the you know, no, no app port name. And then making sure that you can, you got the order ID coming out from the logs. And then at the end, you can expose the while from the no app. So you can do OC expose surface no app. Um, uh, you can call the no app endpoint and confirm that the order ID is being persist. In this case, our order ID 42. So now you have just uh, finished the deployment of a data app. You can go ahead and update the sample code and fit our scenario, right? So in conclusion, data uh, work well with cloud native OpenShift, enable easy event-driven stateful microservices deployment and development. Uh, data provide consistent and portability using standard API including HTTP and gRPC. This architecture is also open source and work well with any programming languages and development framework. That's it, the end of the presentation. Uh, please let me know if you have any question. Thank you. Hi. Um so let me check again to see if Yip is here. If you're listening, Yip. For a second. This is a picture taken on the Fifth Avenue in New York. Uh, if you're here, Yip, uh, we need to have you try to share your audio and video.
Uh, okay, so I guess Yip is not here um, for the Q&A. Um, you can try and follow up with him in person, um, or you can also try going to the breakout booth later on. Um, he may uh, be there. Uh, people who want to have discussions about things that happened in evolving technology, um, the breakout booth is the place to do it. It's the new edition room, and I'll put that link in chat. Um, for anybody who wants to go there. 